Hey everyone, welcome back to Piedra Designs. Uh, this week we have this block of wood. I am not sure what it is. It was given to me by my dad. Uh, he had ordered it several years ago. Um, it's Obviously it's wax coated right now, but it has been in his shop for many years so this piece should be good and dry um i'm gonna go ahead and and square it off to start with um i don't know if you guys can see this it appears that we've got some sort of crotch piece here uh, we've got two two separate sets of growth rings here um, and we've got a big, big split right there. So I'm going to cut that part off and we'll start then with the, with the square and we'll go from there. Probably just going to be a simple bowl with this one. I don't know, maybe once we get it rounded out, maybe we'll think about putting, putting an inlay of some sort in the outside but uh i'm gonna get this get this cut off here and get it mounted up and then we'll be back all right so i got that cut off square got her mounted up in lathe uh we're just between uh step centers right now uh, i'm gonna go ahead and start turning try and get this rounded out and uh get the bottom flattened out and trying to get a tenon cut. Gonna start off turning about a thousand right now. All right, there's our tenon established. Now we'll uh, we'll see about getting uh, what will be our rim for the base of the bowl, and getting this bottom rounded out, and start thinking about trying to get some good clean cuts on this. Wow, that knot is hard. I'm going to go sharpen up again. I'll be back in a minute. All right, we sharpened up again. And I don't know if it's the knot causing it or if I'm blaming the knot and it's not actually the knot. All this cut over here is smooth. 
but around over here I've got got some ridges I don't know if this is the hard spot or if the knot is the hard spot and making the gouge jump and then this is where it's coming back in contact but we'll see if fresh sharp tool can fix that Got a bunch of it out. Still trying to bounce though. I don't know if that camera angle is picking it up. What I'm trying to do here, because this grain is trying to tear out so bad, instead of a sheer scrape where the tool is coming in flat, I'm trying to do a sheer cut where I've got the, the handle of the tool dropped low. So I'm almost getting a, a skew type cut to get this grain to cut fairly smooth and uh, cut down on some of the sanding and also trying to get rid of where either this knot or whatever is causing the, the tool to bounce so bad, trying to get rid of that stuff. And I've almost got it. Just a little bit more to go and we'll have that done Well, would you look at that chip out right there? Do we try to fill that in or do we make some more cuts and try to get rid of that? Our bowl's already starting to get on the small side. Let's, let's see where those chip outs actually are. The bottom, bottom of that lowest chip out is right there. And so then on, yeah, I think we can go ahead and live with that and just take that down, have our bowl that deep. So I think at this point, it's time for Sandy.
All right, so right now we're sanded up through uh, 240. And in a lot of my past videos, you guys have seen me use the, the Axe Polish and Restoring Paste. But I don't think on any of the videos I've made that I've used uh, their sanding paste. And part of the reason for that is I don't know if I'm using this stuff wrong, um, but I've been, you know, according to their directions, you're supposed to only need to sand up to 240, maybe 320 uh, with your sandpaper and then supposed to be able to use this and get a finish uh you know, closer to a 600 grit finish. I haven't been able to achieve that. I'm assuming it's me not using it right because uh, a lot of the other turners that I watch use it and they love it. So we're going to go ahead and give it another try and see if I can't make this stuff work like it's supposed to and not have to spend a bunch more time dry sanding. Looks like maybe I got it this time. Let's move on to the polishing paste. Well, look at that. I can't say I'm disappointed with that. Maybe I finally got the axe sanding paste figured out. So at this point now, it's time to turn this around and start hollowing. All right, so we got that turned around. Uh, let's see about getting that thing hollowed out some. All right, so we got the inside of that bowl all finished up. You'll see that when we're done. I know back at the beginning of this, I had talked about possibly doing an inlay in, in the bowl. As I got into this and discovered just how porous this is, and then when I was finishing, I didn't put 
any sanding sealer on there at all. I just went um, straight to the axe polish and restoring paste. So because, because of how porous this is, I'm not going to mess with the trying to do the inlay with the uh, thin CA. But what I thought I would try is burning just a couple of lines up here into the top. I haven't done that before. I don't have any guitar wire, but I do have this wedge of maple that should be hard enough to burn. Let's get a couple, couple little grooves made and try to make a burn mark. There we go, except now because of the burning and that uh, wax paste finish, need to retouch that up a little bit. We'll come back after I've done that and we're ready to take the tenon off. All right, we got, uh, got the top of that finished up again and we got her turned around, mounted up, gonna start trying to take this tenon off now. And there we have it. I will get the bottom of this finished up and signed and then we'll come back show the finished product. All right, we've got her done. This is our unknown wood type bowl. Uh, it came out about five inches in diameter. It's two inches tall and about an inch and a half deep. I guess I got that bottom left a little bit too thick, but that's all right. There it is all signed up. Of course, since I don't know what the wood type was, I couldn't add that on there. Uh, we did get our detail burn lines put in that. Uh, Whatever this wood type was, um, like I said, my, my dad had ordered this many years ago, I think with the original intention of making uh, knife handles out of it. For whatever reason, he never did, so he gave it to me. It's very reminiscent of some of our local elm here that I've turned before. Uh, smelled similar, looks very similar. Um, I can't say it's exact, and 
just knowing my dad, I can't picture him ordering elm. But uh, if anyone has any idea what this wood might be, uh, leave me a comment below. The grain on this, um, I don't know if it's the summer growth versus the winter growth, or if it's, uh, I'm not a botanist, so whatever uh, the porous sections are, um, but the, the growth wood versus the porous sections, the growth wood is very, very hard, and you can actually feel all of the ridges. This stuff right here is very hard compared to these porous sections. So it's got a texture to it that you can feel. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, I did get the, hopefully I've finally got the ax uh, abrasive paste figured out. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, any interaction with it helps the YouTube algorithms. Uh, be sure and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.